The process of urbanization has become increasingly capitalistic. The urban environment is an instrument at the hands of capitalists and a central feature for the reproduction of capitalism. But who holds the power to shape the production of the capitalist city? Who gets the right to decide the kinds of urbanism they want? Who holds the right to the city? The city welcomes those who revel in the retail experience. In this urban playground, consumerism isn't merely an act, it's a culture which is woven into the very fabric of the city. The right to the city, it seems, is granted to those who can afford it, those who can contribute to the capitalist conveyor belt. The city's consumer spectacle is designed to attract those from afar, those seeking the British experience. But in a city whose very fabric is shaped by visitors, how authentic is London for those who call it home? When each passerby is a brand new face, do we really have the right to this urban space? In the towering skyscrapers that define London's skyline, the corporate realm thrives. A world of high-powered professionals whose office windows aren't just for looking out, but looking down. In this echelon, the right to the city takes on a different hue. It's not just about navigating the streets, but shaping the skylines. It's not merely about participating in urban life, but orchestrating its economic symphony. As we hear the sounds of the city's flows and fluxes, the right to the city echoes loudest for those with the power to move freely. Urban rights aren't just about physical spaces, but about the freedom to move, explore and connect. With unhindered access to transport, the hypermobile have the power to govern their own movement through the city. Amidst the vast wealth and opportunity that the city offers, we encounter individuals who navigate the streets as their only source of refuge. The city has expelled them onto the streets and so they must survive in the margins of urban existence. The city in which they call home treats them as outsiders, with hostile architecture reinforcing the divide within the urban landscape. Revanchist attitudes expand beyond urban architecture into the mindset of those occupying city space. The informal workforce of the city are both embraced and rejected by it. They are welcome to clean the streets and carry out the tasks neglected by others but are not welcomed to enjoy the city's various expensive luxuries. The city has been home to many generations of families communities and cultures. Yet the intrusion of gentrifying forces may force many of these communities apart. But woven into this urban tapestry are threads of displacement and disquiet. Amid the cranes and construction dust, inequity sweeps through the reformed urban landscape. The 
youth are often the life of the city, filling pubs and shops, and backing the city's economic power. Yet the young themselves are not fully accommodated within the city. Economic disparities and housing struggles cast a shadow on this generation. Whilst London is seen as a hub of opportunities for young professionals, full of diverse opportunities and a cultural hotspot, the cost of living outpaces many of the entry level salaries. A starting graduate salary is not enough when you consider the steep prices of rent and the daily expenses of living in a city. So whilst London sells itself as a city full of opportunity, it is simply out of financial reach for many young people. Urban resistance encompasses city life. It is the people's expression of their right to the city. Dissent in the city presents itself in many forms, which may be both subtle and obvious. Amidst the urban sprawl, subtle movements take flight, reclaiming public spaces, not with slogans or banners, but with presence as resistance. These spaces are not controlled by the rules and regulations of city life. Their purpose is to give a space to those who the city does not provide for. Performance art has historically been prominent form of protest. Creative movements of protest come in many artistic forms, through murals, street art, and the placement of stickers in public places, representing resistant movements, a palimpsest of urban dissent. Alongside the loud, resistive nature of protests and street arts is the persistence of subtle subcultures of urban resistance. Punk subculture has been anti-capitalist since its inception. This cultural clique still has a strong presence in the city, with the fashion, ideals and lifestyle being celebrated by many as a form of resistance against a capitalist city that does not want them to belong.